In this video, we will deep dive into practical ways of working with a date data type. Let's cover off the basics first. The date data type in VBA is used for storing date and times. It consumes 8 bytes of memory. It can store dates ranging from the 1st of Jan in the year 100 to the 31st of December in the year 9999 and time ranging from any second from the start of the day to the end. Fixed date values or rather date entered directly into our code which is also known as date literals can be assigned within hash signs. A date is stored as a whole number while a date with a time is stored as a decimal number. The default value of a variable with a date type is 0 o'clock or rather 12 am. And if we want to convert a different type into a date type, we can use the cDate type conversion function. Let's type out some code to understand what we just covered in the basics. First, we'll declare a date variable that is a variable as a date type. Let's assign today's date to it, which we can get using the VBA date function. To see the value that will be captured in the date variable, let's put a breakpoint by the end sub statement and bring up a locals window. So view locals, run the code and we can see today's date being stored in the date variable. And if we want today's date and the current time, we can use the VBA now function. Run the code and we get the current date and the current time. And if we just want the time, we can use the time function. And that's just the current time. Next, let's assign a fixed date value to the date. Let's take a date, say the 31st of January and pass it into a date variable. And since we're going to hard code the value in, which is basically a date literal, we need to enclose the date within two hash signs. So the 31st of January 2025 and let's click away. The date realigns to the American format, which is the month followed by the day. And my language system settings are English UK, which means everywhere else the date will be displayed with the day first on my computer. Well, everywhere except for here. And that's something to note for all of you who don't use the American date format. And just to confirm how this date is displayed back to us, let's print it out in the image window. Run the code. And we are back to the DDMM format. Now this is just how the value is displayed back to us. The date itself is stored as a whole number. Let's see what that value is. We can assign this date value to a double variable. So set the TP double variable to equal to the dt date variable value and let's print out the db variable value okay run the code and this is the whole number date value we can even disregard the double variable and use a type conversion function to convert the date into a double data type and print it out directly let's do that back to the dt variable and use the double conversion function run the code we get a value and we're converting to a double which stores decimals because later on we are going to see how the time component is stored. Okay, back to our output. So this output is a whole number. But what does this number mean? It is the number of days since the 30th of December 1899. This date is the lowest acceptable date and any date prior to it will be displayed as a negative number. Next, let's try and pass in date and time together. So we'll pass in the time as 1 a.m. Notice VBA automatically adds the AMPM notation. Run the code. We get the value back in decimals. The decimal part represents the percentage of the day passed. For example, let's see what we get for 12 p.m., which is half the day. Run the code. We get 0.5, which is 50% of the day. And let's say we want to only capture the date value from a given date time value. We can achieve this in two ways. We can extract the integer portion of the date using the int integer function. So we will use the function int, run the code, and we get just the date value. 
or we can use the date value function. Run the code, we get the date again. Okay, coming back to this date value, we aren't restricted to assigning a date literal, we can assign a string literal as well. In fact, we can pass in a date in any valid format as a string. So DDMM, run the code, we get back a date value, indicating that the value given within this string literal can be successfully converted into a date type. Let's write the date in another way. Try this code, it's accepted as well. But what happens if we try and pass an invalid format, such as year first followed by month and date, run the code, we get a type mismatch error. Let's fix this next. We can construct a date if we have the year, month and days in integer format. To do this, we can use the date serial function. Type in the year, month and day. Let's print out the result and we get our date. Now consider this previous string format that gave us an error. Our objective is still to convert the string into a date. What we can do is pass this date string into its individual components using string functions. First, let's assign the date string into a string variable. So we'll first declare a string variable and assign the date string value to a string variable. Next, let's assign some more string variables to store the year, month and day string values that we are about to extract from this string. The year will be the left four characters of the date string. The month will be the middle characters starting from the fifth character and extending two characters in total length. To extract part of the string, we'll use the mid function. Starts at five and is two characters long. And the day will be the right two characters. And now we can pass the year, month and day into the date serial function. So let's declare the date variable. The year will be the string year, month will be the string month, and day will be the string day. Close the bracket, and let's print the date value. Our date is constructed for us. And notice one thing, as per the function definition, the arguments need to be passed as integers or rather numbers, but our three variables are string representations of numbers. This will still work though. VPA will convert the string to numbers in the background. This is called implicit conversion. We could even convert the string into integers ourselves using the integer type conversion function. So something like this. This is explicit conversion. We have talked about implicit and explicit conversions in the lesson on introduction to data types. But for now, we will rely on implicit conversions. We could even use the time serial function to construct just the time component. So let's do 10 a.m., 10 minutes past, and 10 seconds. Print out the value. We get the time. And we can even use the date serial and time serial functions to create a full date time value. Run the code, and we get a full date time value. Date is a whole number and time on its own is a decimal, so we can safely add the two. We can extract parts of a date such as year, month, hour, etc. using the date part function. We need to provide the interval or part of date that we are after and the date as arguments. The interval is the part that we want to extract, so let's extract the year followed by our date. Run the macro we get the year. 
As you can see on the screen, there are a few interesting arguments such as Q for quarter and WW for week. If you're in finance and are working with corporate reporting, these arguments may come in handy. Next, let's look at how to add and subtract dates. If you want to add or subtract a date interval such as a day to a date, we can use the date add function. Let's add one year to our date value. So the interval is the year. Number of years that we want to add is one, followed by our date. Run the macro. Our year is now 2026. We can even go back one year as well using a negative number. So let's go back one year to 2024. Run the code and we get 2024. And if you want to get the difference between two dates, we can use the date div function. So let's define two dates. Let's say we want to calculate how many months apart these two dates are. Let's use the date diff function. The interval now will be months, which is given by M. If you want to get a positive result, let's start with the earlier date first, which is date one, followed by the later date. Run the macro. We get four, which is four months, which is correct. And if we wrote the dates the other way around, we should get a negative value. So negative four, which is also correct. Another useful function is the weekday function, which gives us a whole number representing the day of the week. If you're in accounts or in finance, this function will be useful for determining workdays versus weekends. The output of the function depends on what you provide as the first day of the week. The default is Sunday, and 31st of Jan 2025 is a Friday, so the function would return a 6. Let's test it out. Run, we get 6, which is Friday. Now, I prefer my week starting from Monday, so 1 to 5 should be weekdays, and 6 to 7 should be weekends. To achieve this, we can add Monday as an additional argument. So, comma and choose Monday from our enumeration list. And we can see in the tooltips here that Sunday is the default first day of the week, which we are now overriding to Monday. Let's run the code. This time we are expecting five for Friday and we get five as expected. If we want to return the name of the day, that is the word Friday, we can use the weekday name function. The weekday name function requires the weekday or rather the day of the week as the argument and we can use the function output from our previous example as the input for the weekday name function. Okay, so this time we are expecting the word Friday and that's what we get. On a similar note, we can return the month name from the date. So in our case, we want to return the word January and to do this, we can use the month name function. We need to provide the month as a number, which we can extract from the date using the date part function that we had seen earlier. Okay, let's play this out. We're expecting the word January and we get the correct result. In finance, we like to represent months within reports in different ways. Suppose we want to represent the month and the year from this date simply as the string January 25, how can we do this? I can show you the easy way, but first let's try and construct it using the knowledge that we have gained so far. The reason is that we won't always have a function available to do the exact conversion that we are after. So sometimes we just need to construct it the hard way. Okay. First, we want the word Jan, which is the first three letters of the month name. Let's grab that first. Let's first grab the full month name using the month name function. We just saw this example earlier. So this will print out January and what we want is the left three characters 
A good way to construct a complex concatenation is to keep printing out the values of the substrings to make sure that we are on the right track. So Jan, that is correct. Next, let's grab the year. We can grab the year using the date part function. We need to do a little more than that. But first, let's just grab the year as is. Let's print it out and see what we get. Okay, so we get 2025, but what we want is 25. Now this 2025 is a number. So let's change it to a string using the string type conversion function. And then we'll grab the right two characters from that year string. So now let's print out the year. We get 25. That's great. And now all we need to do is concatenate the month to a hyphen and then the year. Let's output the value and we get Jan 25. Okay, that was a tough one, but there is an easy way. This Jan 25 is a valid date format and we can convert this date directly into any valid date format using the format function. So let's do that. We're converting the date and the format is the first three characters of the month, which is three capital M's and the last two digits of the year, which is two Y's. Okay. Let's print this out and we get the same result. Let's stay on this previous example. We are working under the premise that the date provided is valid. We have already seen that if we provide an invalid date, we get an error. So we should convert the date format only if the string date value can be evaluated as a valid date value. We can check if a date is valid or not using the isDate function. The isDate function returns true if the date is valid and false if the date is invalid. So let's look at a date value that we had seen in the start of this video. We can't assign an invalid date string to a variable of date type. So instead, we'll assign it to a string variable. So declare it as a string type. We'll update the name as well. And now we can evaluate this date string within an if statement using the isDate function. So if the output of the isDate function is true, then and only then we will convert the format. So we can transfer this print logic into the if construct. So only if this condition is true, then we will execute this logic. So let's run our code. We need to update the format function with the variable name. Okay, let's run our code again. Nothing is printed out. And now let's change the date value to a valid format, run the code. And this time the statement got printed out because we had provided a valid date format. Great. The date data type is used for storing date and time. We can provide a date in any valid format by enclosing the value within double quotes or the hash symbols. Use date serial function to construct a date based on the individual date intervals, that is the year, month and date. Use date part function to extract individual date intervals from a valid date. To add date intervals, use the date add function. To compare the difference between two dates, use the date diff function. We can convert a date to any format using the format function and to determine whether a date string is valid or not, use the isDate function. In the next video, we will learn about user defined types.